Let's talk about the loop of Henle in the kidney nephron. Now, the function of the loop of Henle is to maintain the water potential gradient going down the medulla. So the loop of Henle itself, which is here, this, by the way, is the distal convoluted tubule, and this is the collecting duct. But the loop of Henle and the collecting duct do descend into the medulla, or the middle region of the kidney. Up here is the cortex, the outer region, where you find the Bowman's capsule, the PCT and the DCT. But the loop of Henle and the collecting duct descend down into the medulla. And the job of the loop of Henle is to make sure there is a water potential gradient established as you go down the medulla. And you want the lowest water potential to be right down here. So how is this established and why? So let's go through. First of all, we have sodium and chloride ions actively transported out of the ascending limb. So this is the ascending limb here, because if you think the filtrate is coming from the PCT, it's going down the descending limb and then it's going up the ascending limb. So this is the ascending limb here. And we're going to see the active transport of sodium. And I'll add some chloride ions on there as well. Active transport of sodium and chloride ions out of the ascending limb. Now, this is active transport. It obviously requires ATP. Now, the ascending limb is impermeable to water because the wall is thicker. So no water is going to move out of the ascending limb. But the descending limb, which obviously has a thinner wall, is permeable to water. I'll just annotate that on. So what's going to happen is water moves out of the descending limb by osmosis. And that should make sense. The walls of the descending limb are permeable to water, so water can move out. And because we've been actively transporting sodium and chloride ions out of the ascending limb, we've lowered the water potential in the medulla. And because there's a lower water potential in here, obviously water is going to move out of the descending limb from a higher water potential in the filtrate to a lower water potential in the medulla. Now, other things that it's just worth noting um, some sodium ions or chloride ions do diffuse in to the descending limb, which might be worth a mark on your exam, because obviously there is going to be a high concentration of sodium and chloride ions in the medulla. So some of them will diffuse in here simply because they're going to go from a higher concentration in the medulla to a lower concentration in the descending limb. By this point here, this, by the way, is called the hairpin bend, right at the bottom of the loop of Henle. By this point here, some ions do diffuse out, okay? Simply because, again, you've got to think about water potential and concentration at all times. But by the time you get down here and you're, you're approaching the ascending limb, there's a very high concentration of ions in here because they're diffusing in at the top Water is moving out by osmosis all the way along here. So by the time you get down here, there's a higher concentration because you've got those mineral ions in a lower concentration of water, right? So here you're going to see sodium ions and chloride ions start to diffuse out. So we've got sodium ions and chloride ions diffusing out at the bottom of the ascending limb. You've also got sodium ions and chloride ions being actively transported out as you move up the ascending limb. No water is diffusing out of the ascending limb because it's impermeable to water, but water will diffuse out of the descending limb because it's permeable to water and it's going to move from a higher water potential to a lower water potential in the medulla. That water, by the way, will then enter the capillaries. It's being reabsorbed. So we don't lose all of our water in our urine. Now, let's just think about how this affects the DCT and the collecting duct. As you move along the DCT and the collecting duct, water is being lost, yeah? Water is being lost from here. Water is being lost from here. 
And you'd think that that water loss might stop, but it doesn't. Because as you move along, water is being lost. So the concentration of the filtrate is increasing as water is being lost. But even though the concentration is increasing and the water potential is decreasing as you go down here, the water potential in the medulla is getting lower and lower. So even though the water potential is getting lower in the filtrate, that filtrate is always going to be next to an even lower water potential in the medulla. So even at the end of the collecting duct, water is still moving out by osmosis and water will still be getting reabsorbed into the bloodstream because you've got the lowest water potential down here. So even though the filtrate has a low water potential here, it's not as low as the lowest water potential down here in the medulla. So water will continue to move out by osmosis along the DCT and all along the collecting duct. That principle is known as the counter current multiplier. OK, all of this, by the way, is helping us to produce concentrated urine. It's helping to make sure that we don't lose too much water in our urine and that we reabsorb the water that we require producing concentrated urine. You might see questions about desert mammals. And basically what you need to be able to know to answer those questions is the longer the loop of Henle, yeah, the longer this is, like desert mammals have longer loop of Henleys, the more sodium and chloride ions will be actively transported out. So the lower the water potential in the medulla will be. So even more water will diffuse out of the filtrate by osmosis. So it's going to help those desert animals to reabsorb more water by osmosis if they've got a longer loop of Henley. Tough, tough topic. It's hard for me to fit it into kind of a shortish video, but hopefully you found that useful. Hopefully you understand a little bit more now about how the loop of Henley and the countercurrent multiplier works.